Okay, property's 1968 today. It is a little bit older and it's hot, man, it's really hot. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in, I'm gonna show you, I did a quick walk around and I'm just gonna show you some of the basic finds I ran into. And this actually happens quite a bit on these 1968 uh, townhouses. So you can kind of get an idea of what you're gonna walk into when you put in an offer on a place like this or you can prepare your clients whenever you make a purchase. All right, let's go check it out. Normally one of the first things I like to do is try to determine the type of plumbing that's in the property. And I knew through this little cubby hole right here I was gonna be able to do that uh, because it's right behind the shower. They probably had a previous repair in the past. Right here in this cubby hole, they took copper and they tied it directly into galvanized water lines. Uh, this is not allowed. You need some sort of dielectric fitting or or some sort of fitting that fits in between the galvanized water lines and the copper to prevent electrolysis from happening. What this does is it causes corrosion and it will eventually leak in the future. Okay, one of the next strategies I always like to do is do a quick walkthrough on the inside. This will kind of develop my strategy for the next phase of my inspection, but the quick walkthrough is I like to scan all the ceilings with my a, a, bright, <laughs> a bright flashlight. And the bright flashlight is I use is called Phoenix. It's a Phoenix uh, PD40R. It's a really good flashlight. It shoots almost 900 lumens of pure white light. And you really want that white light because that will knock out a lot of the yellow lights that we have in our, in our properties and it'll shine up the water stains really well. And whenever I do this, it's just a quick scan of the inside, just trying to find those water stains and possible water penetration. So when I'm on the roof, I know where to go. Also, I like to look out windows, especially on something like this. Whenever you look out the window, you can see down to the garage and you can see the garage roof isn't performing very well. It's a flat roof and it's not shedding all the water properly. And you can see the granule loss building up on top of the roof. This granule loss is an easy area where water can eventually penetrate. And as I walked into the garage, I could see the water staining right along there. And I'll show that to you too as well. Okay, so what Robert's doing right here, he's installing our shower pan stopper. You can actually buy this from my dad on his website. Uh, but we know this has been recently renovated and we know all these renovated showers, they often leak. So we're gonna fill it up with about two inches of water, let it run with the stopper. And this stopper allows us to leave the room while the water's running and we can focus on other things during the inspection. Okay, it's getting pretty hot up here, but I just uh, knew I needed to come to this area of the attic. Uh, because I saw the water stains in the rear corner bedroom over here and as I came up here It was pretty much easy to spot you could see all the water stains running down the wall And then you could see the water stains running down the wood here Well the remember whenever water is running down it actually can travel down the rafter pretty far So what it's doing it's running down the wall and we're not seeing it probably because it's going behind the wall right here But it's running down the rafter and it's causing the water stain over there in the corner So it's just following the drip line um, so with that being said, you always want to remember to look behind things too as well. And as I look behind here, I can see a, a cut right down the step flashing. And that is the reason why the roof is leaking in this area. Okay, for the up in the attic, a lot of these 1960s homes, they're going to have this older ductwork. Uh, this ductwork is going to be close to the end of its life. It's metal, it condensates, and if there's any type of holes in the insulation, it's going to leak uh, down below. Also, you can see we have an open-ended wire over there, and you know that your HVAC is going to be needed to be updated. It's going to cool right now, but it's not going to be the best. Another thing I like to do as a home inspector is uh, if I have these hatches, I always like to open it up. So I haven't really opened this one up yet, and I love doing it because it's, it gets so much cold air, you're like, oh yeah. <laughs> it just feels so good, but uh, especially, but you can see right here, uh, we have a lot of dirt inside there, and uh, these need to be clean. Uh, it's actually not even draining very well either, and that will eventually cause the coils to rust up and maybe cause a leak in the future. Okay, so what Robert is doing right here is he's uh, removing the shower drain. We're going to let all the water drain out. And then we're going to come in behind it to check if there's any water penetration underneath with the thermal camera and in the adjacent closet. 
Okay, you can see right after I touched it and then I scan it with the thermal camera here. It doesn't show up very well in the camera, but it would if I saw any uh, blue marks. This is one of our cheaper thermal cameras, but it still gets the job done. It'll tell you if there's any type of moisture penetration. Okay, sudden quick change. Um, the client showed up and uh, his family showed up too and I didn't really want to bother them running around with the camera and explaining items on the old 1960s house. So uh, I'll let Robert take over there and uh, let him handle the clients and you know there's not much confusion going on. Josh is actually just right around the corner. He's on a brand new build in one of those townhouses and every now and then we find some pretty good stuff. So uh, let's head over there and go check it out. Pulled up, got these nice uh, townhouses, uh, and I do find a lot of weird stuff on this. Uh, Josh said it was pretty boring. I don't know, let's go check it out and see if we can find anything. Okay, I didn't have to travel too far. Um, as you can see right here, they have stucco in place, and with the stucco at the base of it, they actually need to open up the weep holes. Those uh, weep screed allows the moisture to wick out from behind the stucco if any gets back there. It could be condensation, it could be a water leak, whatever, and it needs an exit path to the reduce the amount of damage that can be taken. Josh did say it's kind of boring, so we start trying to find everything we can and right here, here you can see they didn't do the backsplash very well right underneath the microwave they just stopped and you have a huge piece of huge gap okay and the last one um i'm not going to really beat this one to death Ooh, this is a nice countertop uh, whenever we run the sinks we always like to run it up and uh, fill it up about halfway and then we'll drain it all at one time and then we will look underneath the cabinet as we do it and Josh was saying, oh, you can even see it right here. It's uh, it's leaking already, so let's turn that off. But yeah, we, we have some water. I'm gonna go get a towel and uh, clean this up. Josh is correct. That house was very boring for us, but very exciting for the client because for the client, if that's all we're really getting in the property, we start stretching and starting to kind of pick, nitpick at some of the cosmetic items. And uh, you know, if all I have is a leaky drain, uh, you're in pretty good shape. You know, you're really good shape whenever it comes to that. And then uh, on the 1960s home, we did find some good stuff um, with that. And I hope y'all learned something today. If y'all have any home inspection questions, please give us a call and please like and share the videos. Bye.